Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade the storage on your PlayStation 5 as the latest system software update has unlocked the internal SSD bay which really is something that should have been available from the release date of the console as there's only 667 gig available. So in this video I'll cover the specs required and the drive I've used. I'll include links in the description below together with the cost of buying with and without the heatsink and the easy installation process which shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. And obviously this isn't as easy as plugging in an external USB drive, which I've already shown before. And I'll include a card in the corner together with link in the description if you wanted to see that too. But this is very easy to do. I'll be showing the upgrade on the new system software update and not on the beta. So this is what you'll see on your PlayStation if you've updated. And here's a version I'm on. If you look on Sony's website, you can get a spec of the SSD that needs to be met. So it needs to be Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD with a capacity between 250 gig and four terabytes. And read speed needs to be 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. In terms of the dimensions of the SSD, you'll have to keep in mind if you buy one without a heatsink, you're going to have to buy a third party one and attach it to the storage. There are obviously a number of options available online, but I've gone for Western Digital Black SN850. These drives are available with and without the heatsink, and the choice really comes down to whether it's worth buying with the heatsink or not. I put the prices on the screen for the 500 gig, one terabyte and two terabyte. You can see the saving yourself and these prices will probably change in the coming months as the demand increases. But personally, I don't see the point of spending extra money and buying with a heatsink. So hence why I bought the one terabyte without the heatsink. We've got to unplug the PlayStation as this can't be done without opening up the device. There's two sides to the PlayStation and the one we want to open up is the side where the drive is. So if I lean it this way now and to open it up, you just lift the corner up slightly and push down and it just unclips as easy as that. The location to install the storage is just over here. The screw is just here to open this cover up and you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. With the cover open, you can see there's another screw just there. We need to remove that and there's a spacer just underneath that. Here's a screw and spacer, just keep them safe. Let's get our memory and heatsink out of the packaging. These are the items you get with a heatsink. To get the storage installed, first thing worth mentioning, the sticker on here should not be removed as this will void the warranty. Most of these SSDs have metallic stickers that help spread the heat out, so it's fine to leave on. You've got a curve on there and that matches up with the curve on the heatsink. Now, if we take the thermal pad, you can see there's a sticky bit on there. So what we'll do, we'll take one end off and we'll line it up and just stick it down. And then if we peel off the other sticky layer, we can take our storage, line it up and stick it in position. Take the other thermal pad, take the cover off it, place it in position and stick it on. Peel off the other side, take the other end of the heat sink, squeeze it together gently and that's it. Now we can place the screws on either side of this. And there we have it storage installed with a heatsink, as easy as that. Coming back to my PlayStation to install the storage and just lining up the storage next to it, you can see the screw hole would be at the 80 point just over here. So now we take the spacer, place it in there. Taking the storage, it just slots into position there. You can see the short end goes towards this bit and the longer bit is that side. And that's it, it locks into position. And now we need to just screw it down over here. And there you go, it's locked in position. Now we can get the cover back on. So you see it fits perfectly with the heat sink on the storage. Place the cover back on. And that's it, let's get this plugged back in again. Powering on my PlayStation, this is what you're initially presented with. So to use the M.2 SSD, you need to format it first. So let me select that and confirm does a read test of the storage and gives you the value there and just informs you if you experience any issues, you should try moving the game onto the console storage. Okay to that, the storage is formatted and we can now change the location where games are installed. Okay to that. And now we can sign in as normal. Going back to settings, storage, 
installation location. You can see here the default location for installing PS5 games and PS4 games is the console. So it's just as simple as selecting here, switching over to M.2 SSD storage. We'll do the same for PS4 games. And now coming back from here, looking in M.2 SSD storage, you can see the capacity that's available here. So one terabyte free. And now to move games across, you just go to console storage, games and apps, pick your game. I'll go for Call of Duty, select item to move. And this is 129 gig. If I select move, that's moved across now. And it was pretty quick doing that. Now coming back, going into M.2 SSD storage, games and apps, you can see it there. Now you're not limited to just using the SSD. You can plug in an external drive and use a combination of both. So for external drives, you can play PS4 games directly off that or move PS5 games onto it. So if I was running low on storage, I'll just use this external hard disk I've got to move PS4 games off. But you can't play PS5 games directly off this drive. Performance wise, it's identical. No issues at all. Games load up just as fast. So it's as simple as that for installing your M2 SSD storage on your PlayStation 5. And like I've shown in this video, the cheaper option to go for is buying the storage without a heatsink and installing a heatsink yourself. If you didn't want to go through that, obviously buy the storage with the heatsink already attached on. So there you have it. You made it to the end of another video. And if you're new to the channel, hope you can subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be informed of my next release. Smash that like button as it really helps me out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.